Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today I'd like to talk about some of the basic settings in PE Design 11. And we'll start with your hoop settings. And let me show you how to get to your hoop settings. There are a couple of different ways. You can actually get to it from your wizard by selecting the set hoop size and fabric. I'll close the wizard. You can also get to it by choosing it on the menu bar here under design settings. And then if you modified your ribbon uh, by adding more commands, you can add it as an option. You can see the hoop, I've added it on my ribbon bar. I'll click it open and we'll talk about, there are two pages and the first is the design page and you'll see two machine types. One is for single needle machines and the second is for multi needle machines. And all of the hoops that Brother makes are listed under each of the machine types. And it may be that you have a machine that will only take, for instance, a five by seven hoop, so you don't want to choose a nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. You need to choose a hoop that will fit on your machine. The other thing you'll notice, there are two hoops that have asterisks. These are multi-position hoops, and I'll show you one of those right now. And when you look at the multi-position hoop, what you see is that there are separate little lines separating um, multiple hoop settings. On that hoop, there's a way to move the hoop so that you can move to the next setting area. I had a, a hoop that's similar to this on my Bernina machine, but I do not have it for a brother. Going back to the page, we'll change back to a 5x7. And one of the things you notice on some hoops, you can rotate. Obviously, if this was a 4x4, you can't rotate it. It would make no sense to rotate it. But there are some hoops that you cannot rotate as well. Um, so if we look at one that I created on a, a user created hoop, you cannot rotate it. Or on the multi-needle machines, you cannot rotate it, for instance, for your um, cap frame. You can see that it's grayed out. We'll talk about custom hoops and custom sizes in a separate video, but you can create one yourself. And I, I created one that really makes no sense as far as the size. But if you wanted to create one, what you do is you type in the dimensions and you add a comment and then you click add. For right now, I'll cancel. Okay, the second thing we're going to talk about is the page color. You can change the page color. You can see right here it's changing the color of the page based upon the size of the frame. Let me change to a different frame. So you can see that if you wanted it to be red, for instance, because you had white lettering, that might be meaningful. I tend to leave it as white. You can also change the background color which is the gray area that I had previously in the background. I'll change it back to light gray because that's what I like. Uh, and then the next tab is called Output. There's two different sewing areas that are described. If you choose Design Page Area, then your pattern or your design is going to be sewn so that the needle position when you start sewing is aligned in the center of the design page and the dimension of your design matches the size of the design page. Therefore, you cannot move it around in your layout and editing. For that reason, I tend to choose use existing design area because what this does is the patterns will be sewn so the needle position when you start is aligned in the center of the, of the design and the actual design size is maintained, therefore giving you more mobility whenever you're using layout within your embroidery machine. Optimize hoop changes uh, when you have one of those uh, multiple um, multi-position hoops. And what it does is it optimizes the uh, sewing order. 
so that you don't have to move the positions as often. And jump stitch trimming is if you have a multi-needle machine, it will be enabled. You will have to have a machine that will accept this function though. So I'll go back and choose the 5 by 7 function and I'll leave it on uh, rotating the design 90 degrees and choose OK. The next thing I want to show you, I'll add a letter on the screen. And I have the word brother. Let me make this a little bit larger so you can see it. And let's look at our fabric settings. And to do that, you can choose fabric selector. Right now it's set for terry cloth. And you notice it's 2,157 stitches. If you have the check mark down at the bottom, what that does is it'll convert the sewing attributes for outline data and text data to the uh, number of stitches for the fabric that you select. So let's choose sheer and notice it's now 2157 and when I press OK it has reduced it down to 1847 stitches and it reduced the density of this design because it, if I had over 2,000 stitches, it would be heavy on sheer fabric. So that's nice to have. The other thing that's nice about that settings page, and we'll go back to it, is that it gives you recommendations about what type of stabilizer to use for each of the types of fabric in the application. So that should be something that would be helpful for you to use. I'm going to uncheck this box right now and I'll delete this design. The next thing I want to show you under options and options is to set up your screen calibration. Screen calibration is uh, no more than taking a measuring uh, device like a ruler and holding it against the screen. I have a touch screen so I have to hold it a little away from the screen and measuring the blue box the length of it and then what you need to do is to enter what your actual measurement is. So if yours measured to be 90 millimeters then enter that amount. Mine is 100 millimeters and so I left it at 100 and what this does is it gives you, you the design in the actual size when you have the one-to-one -one ratio. It will show you the size it will be when it is stitched out. Now the next thing that I wanted to talk about is are the rulers on the top of the page. If you notice in the corner, you can see the right now I have a little IN for inch. If I click on that, it now becomes millimeters. And you'll also notice I have grid lines. If I go to view, I can show the grid or I can uncheck it and not see it. I can set the interval settings. We'll show the grid again and let's change it to one inch. And I can, if I want, I can put snap to grid on. I'll show you that in a moment. I can also have it hide the ruler or I can have it show the ruler and I can have guidelines. And let me show you how that works. So I'll enter a letter and let's just enter a T. And what I want to show you is how you can use guidelines to help you out. So if, for instance, I want to line up several things uh, on, at a specific point or a line and I'm trying to keep it in alignment. Let's say I want to create a guideline right here. All I did was click with my left mouse button and I created a guideline. Let me go ahead and click here and I'll add another one. So let's say I want to put something in this corner. I'll go to my text box and I'll put a letter in and let me make that larger so you can see it and now what I can do is use that guideline as a placement line for me so I can line it up 
And there's nothing that prevents you from entering multiple guidelines on your page. They're just tools for you to use. You can move them if you notice, um, or if you click on it, and, and you can also delete it. But you can move them up and down, or right and left, and you just double click, or click once, and it will remove that guideline. The other thing that I wanted to show you is uh, the grid. I showed you that you can turn it on and off. Well, you can also add icons to your ribbon down here by choosing customize your ribbon and you can choose more commands. So what I want to see, and I've already added most of the popular commands. I can go down and look, for instance, in view, and I can add commands that are uh, associated with the ruler. And for instance, I showed that, or the guideline. I have a few over here on the right. And all you have to do to add something, we'll just add view uh, thread trimming here. You choose add, and it goes to the bottom. If I wanted to move it up in, in the order to make it more meaningful with the with the other things that are on my screen, I can move it up by selecting it and choosing the arrow key. You notice I've tried to move it without the arrows. That does not work, as you saw. I don't really want that, so I'll choose cancel. But that shows you how you can add things to your ribbon. So we've talked about your hoop settings, we talked about the fabric settings, the design page, and we talked about the ruler. And the other thing I wanted to show you is, let's say that we changed our interval levels to something like 0.25 or something small. In fact, let me type it so you don't have to watch me clicking. And if I turned off my grid lines, and so if I turn them off, and I don't see them here. And I um, have not, I don't have anything here that's going to help me to line things up. If I click off on guidelines and rulers, I don't have any measurements up on the top. If I want to, for instance, uh, snap to grid, I need to have a, a grid line that is showing so that I, I have the ability to move things around and, and to snap to grid. And I wanted to show you that. So I'm going to set the setting at 1. And what happens with snap to grid is it's going to move it to a, a place that might be a fraction of the, the interval. But it's going to force you, you can't move it to just a, a place in the middle of the screen, for instance. Um, you can see that what it's doing is it keeps jumping up to the same places. If I turn that off, and I find Snap to Grid very annoying, I can move it where I want, and I can move it up as much as I want. So it's really up to you if you want to use Snap to Grid or not. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any comments, please let me know. Thanks.